Hi guys, Brad Richardson here with Everything Functional. And I got a little exercise I wanted to go through with you guys to show you a little bit about how scope works with variables. Uh, but before I do that, uh, I wanted to let you guys know that Damien Roussan from Sorcery Institute and myself are going to be teaming up to teach in-person courses for the next year or so. So make sure you get in contact with me if you're at all interested in uh, being a part of that. Uh, so, so now let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I've been getting some questions recently that kind of are arising as a result of uh, not understanding or misunderstanding of how scope works with variables. And so I've got a little exercise that I wanted to go through with you guys. What I've got up here is I've got a program and some modules. It's just a simple program that doesn't really do much necessarily meaningful, but is going to be really useful for demonstration purposes as we go through this exercise about how scope works with variables. So first thing I'm going to do is we're going to work through this program basically by hand. We're just going to do run this program by hand. Uh, and so the first thing that I want to do is set up kind of how we're going to do this process. And first thing is we want to know what's basically the static storage. And we're going to write that down. And so the static storage is going to be any variables declared in a module that basically are out before the contain statement. So anything, so, so these two variables are going to be what, are, what, are, what is our static storage. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write over here, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to write static, and so we've got two variables here. So we've got E and F. And so I'm going to write those down as static storage. And so we don't know what values they have yet because we haven't started running the program yet. But we're going to reserve a place for us to keep track of their values. And so the next thing that we're going to do is now we're going to start executing our program. Now, now we're ready to start executing. So the first thing we do is I'm going to draw a little box here. It's going to represent our current execution scope. And the first thing I'm going to do is in the current scope of our execution, now I want to know what are the variables that are going to be in scope. And so one of the first things we have is actually something kind of interesting is right here, I've actually renamed within this scope the variable here that we're going to be accessing. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at, you know, what are we bringing into scope? And so we're bringing into scope G here, but it refers to E in our static storage. And so next we've declared some local variables. So we've got A and B here. And so we're going to, so now we've reserved space for our local variables here in this execution scope. So these are the variables that are going to be in scope here. Now we're actually ready to start executing this program. So the first thing we do is we assign three to the variable A. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to write three is the value of A now. The next thing is we assign three to the value of, or four to the value of G. But really G refers to E over here in our static storage. So really what we've done is we've assigned four to the value of E. Next we're going to call a subroutine. And what that's going to do is that's actually going to set up a new scope of execution for us. So I'm going to draw a new box over here that is our next scope of execution. And we're going to go through that same process of figuring out what are the variables that are in scope here. And so we'll start, basically we can just start at the top. And the way this works is anything, we'll just go through it. I think that's going to be the most straightforward way. So first of all, we're bringing F into scope here. So we've got F. 
and that refers over here to the same F from the static storage. We're also, we're also got E in scope here, and that refers to the same E in the static storage here. Now we're also gonna bring C and D into scope. But these are arguments to our subroutine. So C here, in the, in the context of executing subroutine one, C is actually gonna to refer to A, because that's the actual argument to our dummy argument. So C actually refers to that storage, and then D is gonna to refer to B. And we're also bringing into scope an enter a value A. But you'll notice here that A is local. This does not refer to the A from our, pro from our main program. This is its own A. So the first executable step here is we're going to assign the value from E to A. So we go and look up what E is. So E is 4. So now our local A is going to be 4. Next, we're going to assign D to the C times A. So first, we need to look up what the value of C is. So right now, C refers to A over here. So C is 3. And A is now 4. So now D is going to be 12. But D here refers back to A from our main program. So actually, B is now going to be 12. And then our last step here is that we assign the value from D, which is 12, to F. But remember, F is from our static storage, so we can put that value 12 over here. Now we're at the end of this subroutine. So now what happens is when we get to the end of the subroutine, this scope goes away. So everything that was inside that subroutine now goes away. All, re all references are disconnected. And anything that was local to this subroutine is gone now. This A is now gone. We don't have that A anywhere in our, in our execution anymore. Okay, so now we're done with that call to subroutine 1. So next we're going to call subroutine 2. So we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to create a new scope of execution over here and go through that process all over again. Now we're over here next to subroutine two. So the only thing here that we've got in scope is F, which refers back to our static storage here. And then we have C and D again. But this time, I've actually reversed the order of the arguments when I called this subroutine. So now C refers to B, and D is going to refer to A. We've only got one execution step here. We're going to find F, which is 12 now, plus C, which is 12. And we're going to assign, add those together. So D is now going to be 24. But D here refers back to A in our main program. So A is now 24. And now we're done with this subroutine. So once again, this scope goes away. And so now we're at the now by the time we reach the end of our program, A now has the value of 24, B has the value of 12. And our static variable, our static storage variables here, E and F, now have 4 and 12. And so having gone through all of that, you can now kind of see that scope of variables really more refers far more to what's in the source code than it does the execution path of your program. So declaring variables in your main program does not necessarily give access to them to any routines that are in other modules. 
and declaring module variables and variables inside of subroutines doesn't get necessarily give your main program access to those variables either. You can access module variables via the use statement and that brings them into scope for the whole of either that program or module. You can also put the use statements inside the subroutines and that only brings those, those things into scope within the, the subroutine. But really, and local variables declared inside of subroutines aren't accessible from outside anywhere. And by the time you, you finish execution of a subroutine, those variables go away and their values are actually just gone now. And they're recreated every time you come back to the subroutine. So that's the basics of how scope works during the execution of your program and how it relates to where you've declared things in your source code. So I hope you guys found that exercise useful and I hope that answered most of your questions. If not, let me know down in the comments. Uh, let me know if you have any other questions or if you have any suggestions for any other exercises that you think I should go through. Um, I'm looking for ways to try and figure out what's, what do you guys need help with. So. Let me know down in the comments. Make sure you uh, hit that thumbs up button, subscribe, hit that little bell icon so you get notified when I do new new videos and new, new demonstrations and stuff like that. Um, so hope to hear from you guys soon. Thanks.